Hello everyone and welcome back to The Odious Soul. My name is Shannon and if this is your first time stumbling across this channel and stumbling across me, um, just to let you know I garden in zone 6B, kind of maybe borderline 7A. I'm in central Maryland and this channel actually started off talking about the Forest Fen treasure hunt. Well, at the beginning of last year, I kind of had a feeling, you know, as COVID was starting, like I already knew that I wanted to grow at least some tomatoes and peppers and some cilantro so I could make fresh pico de gallo at home. Um, but I kind of had a feeling like I wasn't, I kind of knew I wasn't going to find Forest Fence treasure. Like there was something in me telling me not to waste time on it anymore. So I started doing videos on my gardening journey and well then Forest Fence treasure was found. So I am, you know, still like doing videos, still like sharing my life and what I'm doing. I know my followers have watched me go through a lot of things, the loss of a child, watch me getting get married. So they've seen a lot of things. So it's kind of, you know, not only documenting certain things like gardening, but it's also kind of documenting my life. And, and I enjoy sharing and showing strength and even through some of the toughest of life challenges, you know, trying to find things that make you happy. And I think I enjoy sharing those things with, with the people who watch my videos. So for those who of you who have been, have seen my channel, who are already subscribers, who, um, you know, love me or hate me and watch me anyway, um, it's been a while since I did a video. So I want to apologize. Um, this past fall, life threw me another curveball and it was a curveball that really made me kind of I don't want to say reinvent myself but it made me kind of dive inside myself to figure out who am I who do I want to be um what are my beliefs um what do I really believe in what are you know, my morals and my ethics and why do I believe in certain things um I think when we're kids, we're raised, we're taught by our parents and our schools and our churches. And we grow up with a mindset based on other people's belief systems. And, you know, it's like, you know, you grow up and you're like, oh, you know, you know, the sky's blue. But why do you know that? You know, it's because you look at it every day. Well, when you're talking about things that you believe in, like core values and stuff, um, why do I think this way? Why do I feel this way? And it's really made me examine some stuff and figure out what are my priorities? What is it that I enjoy doing? What is it that I really want out of life? You know, I'm not young anymore. I'm not old, but I'm not young anymore. Like, where do I see myself in the next five, 10, 20 years? What do I want out of life? What do I want to work hard at? So um, it's been fun. It's been great to kind of, you know, take the time to really explore me and kind of go through some steps and processes and you know it's been fun so anyway it's now 2021 all right COVID's still a thing um and i'm excited because i started seedlings last week and most of them are coming up and i'm gonna do some more seeds here with you today and i'm gonna show you what medium i'm using because quite honestly seed starting I, d I couldn't really find good information on the internet as to how to start my seeds. Um, like I knew how, like people tell me that, but what medium should I use? Why? Like I just couldn't find something that easy cut. You know, everybody's like, you know, you have your seed medium and then you do this and you follow the instructions and blah, blah, blah. But there is so much good information out there. And I'm going to show you um, how I make my own seed starting mix and and I guess before we get started in that, let me show you my seedlings that are coming up from last week. All right, so just a, sh a small like little thing here about, I went and I got this 30 inch wide rack on Amazon. I didn't want to do the four foot because our door is over there and I thought it would come a little too far out. Plus I have so many plants in here that we brought in for the winter time. So I just went and got a 30 inch rack and I hung these LEDs. I think they're Barina um, 65 Kelvin lights. And quite honestly, I'll probably move the plants a little bit higher to the lights for now. Um, and I actually just have them connected on here. I don't know if you can see this with pipe cleaners. Um, I 
um, attached little brackets, but they come with screws and you can't screw it on. So I just use pipe cleaners to get them on there. And then this way I can actually loosen the pipe cleaner and hang the light lower if I need to, which I probably will do. But this top tray has lavender, echinacea, cilantro, and dill. None of these have started. They were just planted on the 23rd. Right now is what, June 30th. So those still have a little bit of time left, but I planted a ton of brassicas and cold weather because these I can get out before the before the the last frost. So we have some Wisconsin cabbage all, all season, um, early flat duck cabbage, barrel head hybrid. Um, the basil just started sprouting last night. Look at those little tiny babies. This is a red dragon hybrid. It's a leaf cabbage. Kohlrabi just started actually coming up yesterday too. And then in the tray down here, I have um, Brussels sprouts, a cat skill, and then the red rubine. And the red rubine, you can't, you can't really see them. They're kind of dark because they're red. Um, and, I, and I also planted this uh, cabbage colibus, which is kind of a red variety. And you can just see one little sprout back here. I noticed the red varieties you know, definitely are the last to kind of come up down here. Both the baby choy and the pak choy, those are coming up nicely. And then um, red tre tre treviso radicchio is coming up too. So um, gonna let them kind of do their thing, but you can see kind of getting a little leggy. Um, so I'm definitely gonna bring these closer to the light right now. And, but it's a good start. Again, this is just like, we're right at the end of January, beginning of February. So right now I'm focusing on things that I can put out there probably by the beginning of April, um, or at least when the soil gets worked and, you know, things that I can start inside, transfer over, even though we'll still have frost here in 6B. So, um, but again, just very happy with how all the little babies are doing. So what am I going to start seeds today? Well, I have most of the brassicas that I want to start. Um, I'm going to plant carrots and radishes and beets and all that stuff directly in the ground. So I don't want to start them inside. It's really hard to germinate um, those root vegetables in like a pre-seed thing and then transport them over because the root is what you eat. So you don't want to, you don't want to disturb the root. So I'm not going to start any of them indoors. Um, but I do want to start today um, I got a broccoli, which does best in spring and fall, doesn't like summer heat. I got the Waltham 29, so I am going to start some broccoli shoots in here today. And then the rest are just going to be different flowers. So I have four flowers that I'm going to start today. One is a Dianthus Sweet William. Um, those actually seem to be pretty cold tolerant. It's amazing how many um, Dianthus I still have outside that are still green. Blows my mind. Um, I've been expecting them to completely die off. I know that they can be perennial in certain climates. I didn't think mine and a 6B was one of them. I know right now we're getting hit with some really extreme cold and snows coming. So maybe this will be like the end of their life. But I want to start more because I loved them last year and I can't wait to see, you know, some new ones come up. The next one I'm going to start is a pansy. Pansies are also another plant that's very frost tolerant. So it's a way that I can get color out into the garden quickly this year, you know, start brightening up my life and, <laughs> and my world a little bit with some color um, early on in the season. The next one is Rhinoculus. Rhinoculus is also a very early um, flower. It, you know, it, it can handle some cold um, and it actually likes the cold. Once it gets hot in the summertime, they'll die off. So, and Rhinoculus, I'm, fingers crossed, I'm starting them from seed. I know you can get Rhinoculus tubers and um, tried that last year. I think I got them on like super duper sale, but it was way too late in the season to put them in and they never came up. So I'm gonna try to start them with seed this time. Um, so fingers crossed on that. And then the last thing is, is eucalyptus. Eucalyptus can take 90 days to germinate like boom i really want to do a lot of flower bouquets um cut flowers this year i want to make the inside of my house you know smell good and look good and just have that bright flowery chair this year and i'm investing in a whole lot of stuff in order to do that 
So I thought eucalyptus was the perfect pair. I know I went to um, um, my spouse's cousin's wedding back in September and they had, they used like eucalyptus to decorate like the banquet tables, like the dinner tables. And I stole a bunch of it. I was like, just so you know, I made my own bouquet on the way out. It is the end of the night and they were cleaning up anyway. Um, but I brought a bunch home just to dry and have around the house. So now I'm going to start some from seed or I'm going to try to. I hear that eucalyptus is another difficult one to start from seed. So, and I think part of it's just because it takes so long. I think my notes actually say um, it takes 84 to 98 days to germinate. Like that's insane. So um, February, March, April, May, like these may not even come up may not even start to germinate until like May, which is just insane. So we're going to get started on those. So how do I start my seeds? I start my seeds by creating my own seed mixture. So I grab a bucket. Okay. And normally I would say, make sure you clean them out. Um, you don't want, there's like a dampening off disease that you can do when it comes to things. So this is dirty from last week when I did that. Um, so that's why it's dirty, but I do recommend cleaning out everything you possibly can just so you can get rid of any bacteria um, or fungus, things like that, that might be on your tools. Um, so I know I tell you to do that and as you'll see, I'm not always the best at it. So we still don't have a faucet working outside. I had a water tank changed this fall, um, had to kind of upgrade it and the guy installed a check valve which I didn't know what a check valve was. I had no idea what it did. Well, apparently a check valve keeps my faucet outside from working because when the water tank is doing its thing, it has to get down to a certain pressure level before the check valve says, oh, well, we need more water from the well. And then it opens up and lets water from the well throw, flow. But <clears throat> unfortunately, the faucet outside connects to the well pump line before the check valve so it doesn't recognize when the faucet needs water. So I have no running water outside. Um, so it's pretty much why everything's a mess and I'm not doing this in my bathtub. So anyway, so I'm going to start off with peat moss. Um, I got a ton of peat moss last year when clearance from Walmart. And was, this bag is getting low. So I got super lucky. Um, let me just dump some in here. And it's very important that you get the right kind of peat moss. You want this, um, this sphagnum, <laughs> sphagnum, whatever that word is. Um, you want to make sure it is, um, you're not just buying some, some cheap brand. Like you want the good stuff because they'll be better sifted, have less like stigs, twigs, and things like that, like, like chunks. So um, I'm also using a medium perlite coarse and chunky. I think I got this off of Amazon. Um, I actually have more coming from Lowe's being delivered today. I got some vermiculite and perlite coming. Um, but this just helps retain the moisture and break up the peat moss. I'm going to sprinkle a couple cups actually. Probably just pour the rest of this bag in there. Almost. All right, now here is the important part. Once you got the ingredients, and I'm only going to use these two things, peat moss and um, perlite, you're going to take water, all right? Lots and lots of water, and you're going to just start pouring it in there, all right? Peat moss should come to you very, very dry. And what you wanna do for starting seeds is to make your moisture very, very moist, all right? So I poured that in there, and I'm just gonna take my little shovel, and you're just going to start like kind of turning it over. Like imagine like you're kneading bread and you just want to keep turning it over. The water's going to sink to the bottom of the bucket. So you're basically just kind of turning it over, pulling the water on top. And you're going to do this for a long time. All right, so I'm still kind of going through this mess here, trying to make it muddy enough and moist enough. 
but you'll notice I used an entire pitcher of water in this little tiny bucket. Um, now I know that I see homesteaders and people on YouTube like make this kind of stuff, mix it up in big buckets, like huge ones, and they'll use like the water hose and they'll, they actually use like a power drill with like an auger in it. Um, and that's fine. You don't have to, you can do it by hand. It's a little bit more labor intensive. It's kind of therapeutic though. It's kind of like, I don't want to say it's like playing with Play-Doh, but you know, it's kind of like making your own slime as a kid, you know, it's like, yeah, this is fun. So, and it is messy. So, and be careful with how, how full you fill your bucket with your medium because, you know, I always <laughs> get, I always overdo it and get so much on the floor. So I'm actually going to grab my second pitcher of water here and add even more water, but we're getting there. We're getting there. All right, and personally, I feel like just starting the bucket is the hardest. Like getting it started is always, you know, the challenge. And then usually what happens is once I get half, once it's all done and I start filling my little containers, when my bucket gets about halfway full, like after I pulled some out and used it, I will go ahead and put a little bit more peat moss in there, a little bit more of the perlite in there and mix it up. Because like I said, the water definitely settles on the bottom so that stuff down there is usually a little bit moister than what is on top. So if you keep pouring in more medium, you can take advantage of that moisture and not end up having too moist of, of medium when in your final batches. So you can kind of just keep adding to it. And then also it's a little bit easier to work once half of it is already worked and moist and good to go. All right, so I think I'm almost ready to start filling my containers. All right, so for today, I think I only need probably one tray. I'm just going to start probably three of each, um, you know, and I'm, I put four, at least four, I plan on getting four plants out of each little square at most. Um, so maybe do double of something. I don't know if I want to do double of the broccoli or what's my favorite flower, maybe the dianthus or maybe the pansy, don't know. But anyway, so I have these trays, um, the bottoms are solid. And again, mine are dirty, don't judge me. Don't do as I, don't do as I do, do as I say do. And then I have these tops here, which have like little holes. So I have these containers that I fill, they'll sit in here and they have holes in the bottom, of course. Um, and then this will sit in the tray. And then once the seedlings get to a certain height, I'll start bottom watering them instead of top watering. So very important, I'm just gonna say it now so I don't forget, do not water your seeds while they're germinating. Do not, you wanna use a spray bottle. And this is so important because if you make your soil too moist, it could keep the seed, it could drown the seed. Like, you know, when it comes out, it could be too much and kind of suffocate it. And it can also bring in things like dampening off disease and things like that. So you just wanna do like a fine mist spray. Um, you can do plastic coverings, like you can buy plastic lids and kind of do like a little dome, create like a little environment. Now, as soon as the seeds start germinating, you're gonna to wanna to crack that and give it some air circulation. I know my mom works at the local high school and they have a greenhouse and they were just using like plastic bags like from the grocery store on top until the seeds germinated. That's fine too. Like I know nobody's in the school on a Saturday and Sunday. So over the weekend, you know, they made sure they walked, like they sprayed them and then they covered them and that kept them pretty moist over the weekend. So there's lots of ways to do it. You can use saran wrap. You don't have to run to Amazon or to a supply company and buy the expensive plastic tops. There are lots of options for you that are much more affordable. So just kind of throwing that out there. Well, I'm gonna put my gloves on now because I don't wanna get super dirty. Um, you know, a little dirt's good. This soil now is moist and wet and I definitely wanna be more cautious here. So I'm just gonna take my little shovel into my medium. Like I said, it's definitely moist. Like you can 
see the moisture in it. Like you can see, it looks like, like mud now. Um, and you're just gonna shove it in here. Use my hands to kind of smash it down a little bit. And then water will come out the bottom. If it's too moist, if you, when you smash it like that, and you don't wanna smash it super hard, just a little bit. Like you don't want the soil, like this medium to be like super compacted in there. Like you just want it to be nice and, and light, but you're kind of more pressing just to make sure it's in the pot all the way. And you're pressing to make sure any excess water is kind of coming out. And that's also what's nice about these trays that the water will just continue to drain through to the bottom. So I don't have to worry about, you know, it being sopping wet in the bottom of these pots. Here is an interesting fact. And I just kind of really realized this this year while I was watching YouTube videos and doing some research that, you know, peat moss is a great, like kind of, I don't wanna say inert material, but it doesn't really have any nutrients or fertilizer in it. It's, it's great. Like I use it for my carnivore plants. It's great for seed starting. You know, it, it's amazing, but unfortunately it isn't considered a renewable resource. Like it takes a hundred years for peat moss to grow. Like trees, like, like grass, you can do grass every year. Trees, you know, 10, 20 years on some varieties. Peat moss, 100 years. So I'm kind of like, hmm, should we actually be using this in bulk for our gardening? You know, from like a climate stance, it just made me question that. So it is great, I'm going to use it until I find something else that might be better. All right, and here's the part where my bucket is super wet on the bottom. I don't know if you can see that, but it's like super, like it's water. Like it's, <laughs> I created like a little bog in here now. Um, so I'm gonna put some more of the peat moss on top. Actually, I'll probably just scoop it out this time. Just gonna mix and again try to get the water on the bottom try to bring it to the top and then push down the dry stuff that I just put in there mix it all up and like I said this does take a while to do by hand there are other options out there you know electronic you know augers and stuff that you can use to mix it but I kind of find this soothing. It makes me stop. It makes me slow down. It makes me enjoy the process more. So I'm not complaining about it at all. Like for me, it's fun to work it. It's fun to work the peat moss and the perlite and the water together. It, it's, it's enjoyable. So no complaints, just letting you know if you're in a hurry or if you gotta make a whole lot more <laughs> there are other options and I think this is too like I'm doing all my seed starting on a staggered approach I actually went through and I wrote down every single seed I had I mean I'm in a notebook okay I am growing I think 14 different varieties of tomatoes this year maybe I'll do a video on everything that I plan on doing this year so yeah, so um, for me, like everything's done by date. So I, I had stuff that I wanted to get in by February 1st, mostly brassicas, as you saw, a couple herbs because I really miss having certain herbs in the house to pull in. Like, I don't know if you saw, like there is right here is a huge parsley plant. Um, I believe, I can't remember if it's the Genovese or the Greek, um, one of those. Um, probably have tags in it somewhere but it was doing so beautifully outside once it got colder 
And then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna drag this container in the house because my daughter loves parsley and eggs and all kinds of things. And I started using it for a lot more dishes as well. So I was like, oh, well, if parsley can do so amazing inside over winter, even though before I started the seeds, we really weren't using the sunroom, we weren't heating it. Right now we, I have a wood stove going, but I don't always heat out here. So I will make sure the seedlings have warmth. Like if I don't wanna do the wood stove for a day, I'll probably steal like a little heater that my mom has in the bathroom, in her bathroom. I might steal that and kind of figure out a way to tent up the shelves, probably just drape it with trash bags. Not drape it with trash bags, but wrap it with trash bags. I've also seen we can use like aluminum foil. That would probably be really easy to kind of form around those shelves, the shelf legs and stuff, the, like the, the sticks, the stands. So I might do that instead. I don't know, we'll see. Um, but I really want dill and cilantro. Like, like they're some of my favorites to cook with. So they just smell so good, they taste so good. Um, actually, I got so desperate for cilantro, I actually bought some from the grocery store. So I, I created a notebook and I've already done all these things that I wanted to get started by February 1st. I think I have some stuff that might need to be started by mid-February. And then I have a ton of stuff that needs to get um, set up by on March by March 1st or around March 1st. That's when like the tomatoes and the peppers. So we still have like a month for that. And I think FedEx just pulled in with my vermiculite and my perlite actually. Yeah, perfect timing. Of course, I don't need it now because I only have one more container to fill. All right, so here's my pods with all of my little, all my dirt, all my peat moss and um, perlite mixture. And you can see, like, I don't know if it can, if it looks wet to you, but if you, like, if I touch it, like you can see it's definitely moist, but it isn't sopping wet. And this is what we want. We want it to be nice and moist because the seed needs moisture to germinate. So all the soil is wet, but it's not soggy wet. And then by spraying it with water, like when we're done here, and then for me, I, with the wood stove going, with the wood stove going in here, I'm spraying it at least two times a day just to make sure it stays moist. Um, but depending on the, your growing room conditions, you know, just check, make sure you're checking them every single day to make sure it's still moist enough. Um, but with the spray, it won't get sopping, gross, you know, icky, mildewy. So, all right. And then this is my container for seeds. So, um, I kept this here in the sunroom until we started up with the wood stove and then I moved it to the basement because it was pretty cold in here. I mean, cool in here. So in here I have all these little envelopes. Let's see how many pumpkins, gourds, random sunflower seeds. Um, so we're going to get, I'm gonna take these big ones out. Play. So I know my broccoli is in cabbages and similar. And then I'm going to need flowers. Should be one that just says flowers. Oh, not that one. Random, random flowers. Yep, and that should do it. All right, so let's get planting. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna plant is the broccoli. I'm just gonna do three squares, and these are pretty big squares. So I'm gonna do four of them in each one. I'm gonna do like in the corners of it. So most importantly, when you're planting a seed, you need to read how to plant it. Broccoli Wotham 29 says, start indoors in a warm, well-lighted area about eight weeks before planting outdoors. Sow seeds a quarter of an inch deep into individual containers filled with seed starting formula. Got that. They're not individual, but I can always thin or separate once they grow. Um, keep moist. Seedlings emerge in 10 to 21 days. So this is very vital information to know because some things like my first cabbage seeds came up in three days. You can have a, if you're mixing different things in the same flat or all, growing them all at the same time, don't freak out if something isn't coming up right away because some things have longer germination periods. This broccoli, 10 to 21 days. Okay, so it's gonna take a while. Um, before planting the young plants in the garden, plants need to be accustomed, of course, yeah. You need to accustom to being to outside and that's just called hardening off. So once all the seedlings come up, um, like with 
you, you put them outside for an hour one day, then you bring them in the next day, you maybe put them out for two hours. Make sure they're not in direct sunlight, maybe filtered light. Um, let them slowly get used to the condition outside. So that, that's important. You should do that with all your plants. So with the broccoli, I'm gonna start actually here on this end. And I, I'm using a pencil, all right? Just a cute little pencil. And I'm gonna kind of just twist it and make four little holes. And because my mixture isn't super solid, it's like sometimes I'm just pushing apart things. So it's make that one a little bit more even. All right, so I got my little 12 holes. I'm just gonna tear this open, dump the seeds in my hand, and I'm just gonna put one seed in each of the holes. So the reason why I do it this way, well, for one, I have these trays, I have these containers. So obviously this is what I wanna use. But the reason why I put four in one is um, different seeds have different germination rates. So if I have a germination, oh no. Did you see that? When I went to put it in, a bunch just like flew. And I know some went in the dirt and I don't know where and they're dirt colored, oh well. Might have some <laughs> random broccoli showing up someplace in another one. Um, okay, I'm gonna try to be more careful while I talk. Um, different seeds have different germination rates. So not every, nothing has 100%, um, you know, and um, and the older the seed gets, usually the lower the germination rate is anyway. And a lot of these I bought last year, not a big deal. Um, this I actually just got in from Burpee. But, you know, this gives me, as long as I have a 25% germination rate, each of these, I'll have three broccolis at least. Um, hopefully more come up and it's at least a 75% germination rate. And then three plants can live in that for a little bit. And when they get bigger, I can either transplant them outside or I can divide them into separate pots if they need more time inside. So once we get to the tomato plants and the peppers, I will more than likely thin that cell down um, to where there might only be two tomato plants in a cell um, and or in one of these. Um, so it just depends on the plant and how long it has to stay inside for and how big and strong I need it to be when I take it outside. So you kind of got to play with it. But the good thing is, is this way I have options. I can always thin it down to just one plant um, or I can keep all four um, or I can just make it two. Like I have options here. And this way, as long as one in four grows, I have at least one plant in each cell. So that's kind of why I'm doing it this way. All right, and then I just take the pencil and I kind of just cover them really gently and lightly. Dianthus, Sweet William. Turn them over, put one 30, 21 on the back. Okay, all right, stick them in here. Um, the w one thing I'll say, I do have like on the other ones that you saw that are up there, I have a plastic little thing, like a pl plastic name tag. Um, I'm only using these because that was what was accessible on the top of my seed package, seed box. So I was like, I'll just use these. Um, these will not last all season. So they will rot outside in your garden after a while. So if you are really unsure about what you plant when you're, once you get outside, I don't recommend popsicle sticks. They're great for seed starting. Um, they're super cheap. You know, you can buy them anywhere like Walmart. Um, you can buy them off of Amazon and like they're really affordable, but when it comes to transplanting them outside, 
you know, they're, they're not going to last all season. So if you only are planting a few things, cool. If you're planting, like when I go to plant the 14 varieties of tomatoes out in the garden, um, if I don't have it written down someplace else and all I use is the popsicle sticks, more than likely I'm going to forget what half the varieties are. So fortunately I am, I have a plan. I actually have, I created a map. It'll probably change like 10 times before we get there. So, all right. So the next one on the list is pansy. Now these pansies come from outside pride. Now this is a new company that I've never used before. Um, but <laughs> I, I was checking reviews and there was a lot of great reviews for this company and and I'm a little cautious because last year I ordered from a company um, some ball jar lids, um, like different a variety of lids. Their prices were halfway decent. They said that they ship from the USA um, and they, the shipping time was two to nine days and it was so hard to find ball jar products last year. So. I waited and waited and waited. And when they finally saw a tracking number, it was coming from freaking like China. And I was like, I contacted their customer service and I'm like, no, you said they were shipped from the USA. And the lady was trying to explain to me that yes, they'll ship from the USA once they arrive in the USA. And I'm like, that's a lie. You lied to me. Like, I don't, I want to, I want my money back. So she was like, no, no refunds. It's already shipped. And I'm like, so I started, a, I, I waited a while, um, but because of COVID and then the international shipping delays, like it took forever to get to me. Um, and I actually started a claim with PayPal. Like I tried to resolve it with them, with the ball jars. It's like, instead of an S, it's like a Z on the end.com or whatever. Um, so after that fiasco, I was really cautious about ordering from anybody else online that, that I'd never heard of. And I had never heard of Outside Pride. Like none of the other gardeners I watched on YouTube had ever talked about them. But so I looked at reviews um, and some of them were really great. And some of them were like complaining about how, you know, the germination was terrible. And I, I loved how their customer service stood up for themselves and they were like, we can't help it if you didn't plant them right. And I was like, wow, that's awesome. Like, um, and sometimes like you don't want to see people necessarily like have bad customer service like that, where they're like, no, it's not our fault. Our seed is good. If you planted them crappy, that's your own problem. Um, but I, but for some reason I kind of, I kind of liked it. I was like, yeah, stand up for yourself. Like, I don't know. There was something about it. So I am making sure <laughs> that I am planting everything correctly um, when it comes to it. And their website is great. Even if you're not buying from them, go to their website, look up um, the things they sell. They have a ton of flowers, tons of flowers and herbs. And I know they sell like bought grass seed and different ground covers. I just got a ton of flowers. Like, I kind of went overboard with chrysanthemums um, just because I, re I really wanted to kind of play with them this year. Temperature 75, 65 to 70 degrees, germination time 7 to 21 days, no light required. Um, cover seed lightly with peat moss, okay, which is what we're going to do. Um, sowing rate 3 to 4 seeds per plant um, and um, keep seeds moist until germination. Plant spacing 8 to 12 inches. Um, and then there's, you can go online and there's even more information on there. So they, they have full write-ups and like the best time to plant. Like they're like, I love their information. Another good company to find out information on like more thorough planting instructions. Um, like don't get me wrong. I love burpee. I love burpee seed. Like I plant burpee, burpee grows, love them. But their website is, has some stuff to be desired for. Like you don't get enough information in my opinion, you're not getting enough information to necessarily grow them the best um, compared to other sites. So like Eden Brothers, another great site that has a ton of information. Like I think Eden Brothers even tells you if it needs like a cold stratification period. Um, so there are some websites from seed companies that do an amazing job with that. Outside Pride and Eden Brothers are probably my two favorite go-to for if I'm trying something new. So with this, I'm gonna dump, carefully dump these little seeds out of my hands. All right, so I'm just gonna do one row of these. 
Okay, so two more things to do. The next are the rhinoculus. All right, so the rhinoculus, um, this one's a little bit different. This one we're actually going to press. It says do not cover the seed, but press into the soil. It does require light to germinate. So that's a very important factor. And, I, and this is only 20 seeds. So I have to be uber careful. All right, so I got that and I wanna put the rest of them back in before I start pressing. Just because, oh, they are, they look so thin and delicate. Like they're just so tiny and it looks like there's like a little tiny seed inside of like tissue paper it's crazy but anyway okay so i'm just gonna press these down just lightly press maybe i should recommend pressing as you go all right so those are the binoculars write that down I know people love to correct me on my on how I pronounce things. So you're gonna love this video. All right, and then the last thing is the eucalyptus. Now eucalyptus, it says, um, um, so eight to 12 weeks before last spring frost, seeds germinate in four to five weeks at um, 68 to 71 degrees. Um, however, I did read 84 to 98 days on, um, on a different site on the outside the outside pride website so i don't know what to believe well we'll see because i got the seeds from burpee um, but i did look it up on the outside pride so maybe just different varieties i mean they should be the same but anyway we're going to come on seeds come out of there Okay, and this is, what does it say? It says, and actually like the burpee seed pack, it doesn't even tell me how to start them. Um, so outside pride says press them in, not to, not to bury. So we're gonna do that. Okay, so I think we are done for the day. Um, maybe I'll have you guys come back and watch me play with my other seedlings when it comes. Maybe I will do a video talking about all the fun stuff that I will be planting this year because Lord knows I got some list. I am taking it to a whole other level this year. And I'm excited. Like I can't wait. Like I am so excited. I just... I don't know where I'm gonna put everything. So <laughs> it also means I have to create so many more growing spaces. So I'm already planning on creating an herb garden that's closer to the house. So you can join me for that one. Can't wait to see the alien garden come in. Um, I got an arch for Christmas. We're gonna get to assemble that together and put that out at the end of the alien garden. I have hydrangeas, a new peony plant, another rose all coming in. I think I got them from Jackson and Perkins. See, I order too many things and I can't remember where I ordered them from. Regardless, I can't wait to share this stuff with you. Thank you for joining me. If you aren't already a subscriber, please do that now. Like this, like it if you like it. Comment, send me messages. Let me know what you want to see me do this year. Still considering chickens. Not sure if I'm going to be there. I'm taking on so much with the garden, garden aspect. Not sure if I'm going to fit chickens in. And also, I am not a morning person and to have to go outside and let chickens in. Uh, anyway, let me know what you think, what you want to see, and stay safe, stay warm, stay well, and see you next time.